Welcome to the 2021 UIC Department of Occupational Therapy Virtual Graduation Celebration. My name is Dr. Elizabeth Peterson. I'm the Director of Professional Education for the Department of Occupational Therapy's Master of Science program. To say that the COVID-19 pandemic has created some academic challenges since March of 2020 is an understatement, but it has also been a period of reflection, innovation, and building upon lessons quickly learned as we embrace the world of Zoom meetings and online events. This is our second virtual pinning celebration. Last year was the first time we honored the post-professional OTD students, and we are very happy to continue this new tradition this year. Thanks to the post-professional OTD students for giving us even more to celebrate. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Yolanda Suarez Balcazar, Professor and Head of the Department of Occupational Therapy. Dear graduates, two years ago, when you started Occupational Therapy School at UIC, no one could have anticipated what lay ahead. Yet, despite the challenges brought in by a global pandemic, all of you rose to the moment. And we are so proud of you. You keep up with us as we learn how to navigate the virtual world, help us maximize the use of technology in our virtual classroom, and you challenge us to address issues of racial justice. And more importantly, you keep your spirits high throughout it all. This last year has taught us that there's no challenge we can overcome. Thank you, graduates, for the many lessons learned. This special pinning ceremony to honor you is just the beginning. Continue to pursue great things. As Nelson Mandela once said, there's no passion to be found playing small in settling for a life that is less than the one you are capable of living. To journey ahead is not an easy one. These challenging times call for help professionals to embrace harmony, compassion, sensitiveness, tolerance, and racial and social justice. We know that you are well equipped with these values and commitment to contribute to a better world. We trust that you would use your skills and knowledge as an occupational therapist to become agents of transformation and inspiration to others. That every challenge you face becomes an opportunity to grow and learn, just like you did in the last two years, times we will never forget. Successfully completing a graduate degree requires a community support and contributions of many individuals. First of all, your classmates who have been with you through the journey. I would like to also acknowledge our academic faculty and adjunct instructors for the commitment to our students and the profession. We are very proud of our faculty, all of whom are renowned national and international leaders in occupational therapy, education, scholarship, and service. Our faculty worked very hard to successfully transition to online education and supported you throughout the pandemic. I would also like to recognize the support of the academic professional staff. Our staff's energy and valuable support play a critical role in supporting your education. Other individuals who have been instrumental in your education at UIC include the clinical staff from UI Health, the many clinical fieldwork educators who supervise your fieldwork experience, and our community partners who provided many real world learning opportunities. I must also acknowledge the support of your loved ones, family and friends. Their unconditional love and support through this journey has made it possible for you to become an occupational therapist. Graduates, whether you decide to go into clinical practice, pursue leadership opportunities, or continue into the Occupational Therapy Doctorate or PhD degree at UIC, I wish you well. I know that you will be successful. Please come back, visit, become an active alumna. We look forward to seeing you face to face again sometime soon. To close, I would like to leave you with a quote 
from Ralph Walden Emerson. Do not follow where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and lead a trail. On behalf of the occupational therapy faculty and staff, congratulations, class of 2021. Thank you, Yolanda. Each year we have the honor of presenting several awards to students and faculty to recognize special achievements. However, first, it is important to emphasize that the accomplishments of our graduates individually and as a group are quite impressive. We are all so proud of this year's graduating class. Graduates, you have earned your master's degree and soon will be certified and licensed as occupational therapists, but that is not all. Even as students, you have developed solutions to real-world problems for occupational therapy service recipients, occupational therapists, local community agencies, and your fieldwork sites by applying your knowledge and skills in highly contextualized ways. Your accomplishments individually and as a group are so impressive. Consider that several of you have already contributed to the science and mission of the department and the university as student workers. Some students now have publications in journals such as the Student Journal of Occupational Therapy or have presented scholarly work at conferences. And we have had a number of members of this class who are fellows of the Health and Diversity Academy. The fact that you have so effectively completed your OT education during an unprecedented time in our nation's history is truly inspiring. In March of 2020, your Spring 1 semester course is quickly pivoted to online delivery due to COVID-19. Last year, we also faced a national reckoning with ongoing systemic racism, a divisive presidential election, and its aftermath on January 6th. Through it all, you have been resilient and creative in your ability to support each other. While it is disappointing that we're not able to celebrate your momentous accomplishments in person, it is also fitting that the audience for your graduation event is broader than ever before. The tight-knit community that's celebrating with you today extends across state lines. Together, we will continue to be there for each other to create tomorrow's practice. Our newfound ability to use resources to sustain and build our connectivity will serve us well, professionally and personally, in the years ahead. And there's good reason to keep in touch. As members of the class of 2021, you share a unique bond and what a wonderful group of people you are. The faculty describes this graduating class as resilient in the face of uniquely challenging circumstances, flexible, committed to social justice, compassionate, and caring. Let's talk about this class's resilience and flexibility first. These, these students were patient with faculty and themselves as we all navigated through the online learning that was unexpectedly forced upon us. As one faculty member said, the class of 2021 handled the transition to online learning with us with grace and forgiveness as we all learned together. These graduating students maintained enthusiasm even as we work through teaching intervention content, such as sensory integration labs, in a virtual environment. They provided meaningful feedback, especially about online learning, which helped us grow as instructors. Class of 2021, we got the message. You did not like Blackboard discussion boards and loved Panopto and Poll Everywhere. Kudos to you for your very effective use of the chat feature on Zoom. If there was a prize for writing the largest number of supportive comments via chat, whether to each other or to the faculty, you'd get that prize. And when this cohort could gather in person, they made the most of those experiences. The ICU labs with the nursing students were just one example. A standout example of this group's tenacity is their success on level two fieldwork. This class successfully participated in level two fieldwork experiences despite not being able to complete other in-person clinical experiences early in the program as every other class before them had been able to do. This accomplishment shows both the class's dedication to absorbing all the content of the didactic proportion of the program and their creativity in successfully applying those concepts in real practice settings. The faculty appreciated that the service orientation of this class was real. After the March COVID shutdown of face-to-face -face activities, our students continued to volunteer with community sites. They led virtual Zoom dance groups for Gigi's Playhouse, serving children and teens with Down syndrome. 
they provided tutoring and taught classes to formerly incarcerated adults at the Michael Barlow Center. Their commitment to community was also reflected in how they pushed diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts forward. After the death of George Floyd, some students were balancing classes with participating in demonstrations for social justice. This class also helped us take a hard look at our own department. They initiated conversations about equity and inclusion and bravely shared their own stories. These efforts helped us to not only talk about these issues together, but to take real action and make changes to be sure that all are included and celebrated in our department. Students in this class held the faculty accountable to go on record with the department statement and led to a town hall meeting, led a town hall meeting with the faculty. They took the lead on forming a UIC student chapter of COTAD, the National Coalition of Occupational Therapy Advocates for Diversity. They inspired us with their advocacy and action and pushed us to think differently and do more to strive for justice. This is also a group who knows about self-care, a skill that will serve them well in life. When asked to go out and take one photo of nature and one photo of how they're keeping their physical activity up as part of a COVID era assignment, the students' responses reflected their ability to find beauty all around them, whether in blooming daffodils, tenacious vines, or a houseplant viewed against an urban landscape. This group has lots of interests that kept their physical activity up during COVID-19 walks through parks to practice their observation skills and people watching skills, cross country skiing, making sure their dogs are getting exercise, and of course, virtual Zoom workouts with classmates. Well done, class of 2021. When COVID hit, this class created ways to have fun together and keep the mood upbeat. We had spirit day, crazy hair day, dress like a meme, and my favorite, dress like a teacher day, and we shared those photos online. A special thank you to Allison for organizing those activities. Keep in mind that these are really stressful times and these events provided students and faculty with an outlet to do something light and fun. This class created a strong community within their own cohort and within the OT department despite being physically apart for extended periods of time. We will never forget this class of students. We have emerged from this pandemic learning about ourselves and our capabilities as individuals and as a community, and we did it together. Personally, I'm so grateful to this class. I know I have said it many times, but from the bottom of my heart, thank you. You should all feel proud of what you have accomplished individually and as a class. At this time, I would like to invite Gail Fisher to present our first awards. Hello. As chair of the Academic Standing Committee, I have the pleasure of announcing the nominees and awardees for two department awards. So really, I think this year everyone should get an award, but we have two special awards that I will present. Occupational therapy faculty nominate graduates for these awards and then faculty vote to determine who receives each award. So the first award, the Achievement Award, is presented to one graduating student from each degree program in our College of Applied Health Sciences. This award recognizes a graduate who's excelled in academic achievement, leadership, and or service. And this year we had four nominees for the MS Achievement Award. So Allison Bodie is nominated for academic excellence and leadership as well as involvement in community service. Allison put in many hours as a Health and Diversity Academy volunteer for the Michael Barlow Center on the west side of Chicago, tutoring and teaching formerly incarcerated adults who were trying to earn a high school certificate. Allison also took on the role of being an informal leader for her class, as all of you know, launching Spirit Days last March just after we began online teaching. Her positive attitude and actions helped us get through those tough early months. Sarah Camelloni is nominated in recognition of her service to Chicago area Latinx families and individuals with developmental disabilities. Sarah worked as a research assistant for a year and a half for PODER, a federally funded project focusing on health promotion among Latinx children and adolescents with intellectual or dis developmental disabilities and their families. Sarah demonstrated great commitment to community service. She was one of the most successful interviewers of children and caregivers in the study. 
Mia Di Giacomo is nominated for academic excellence and service to the department in her role as the Department of Occupational Therapy's Public Relations Student Liaison graduate employee. Mia was one of the best students we have hired for this role. She assisted the faculty and staff, including me, in moving everything online once the COVID restrictions went into place, such as the applicant visit days, open house, and orientation. That was a huge challenge and she approached it with her usual positive attitude and support for our department. Last, Mackenzie Jekyll is nominated for her outstanding academic performance, accomplishments as a teaching assistant in psychology, and her demonstrated sustained commitment to pediatric occupational therapy practice. Mackenzie is already presented at the Illinois Occupational Therapy Conference, and she did a great job co-presenting with me to the first year students about professional networking. She will be a trainee in the LEND program next year while she's enrolled as a post-professional OTD student. So this year, the UIC MS and Occupational Therapy Achievement Award is presented to Allison Bodie. Congratulations, Allison, and thank you for all of your contributions. The second award, the UIC OT Emerging Leader Award, recognizes an MS student who has shown dedication and commitment through one or more of the following, volunteer service and leadership roles, presenting at a local organization or professional conference, or co-authoring a publication, or establishing a program, organization, or event. Two students are nominated for this award. Bethany Marshall is nominated for her leadership efforts in organizing and implementing fundraising, service, and community outreach events across multiple community agencies. And she successfully organized and carried out projects with her classmates and with the faculty too, even after COVID hit. Like Allison, Bethany volunteered at the Michael Barlow Center, where she was a math tutor and instructor for the communications class. She also organized and led a campus-wide film discussion series on disability and patient-centered care. Asha Rao was nominated as an emerging leader due to her long history of volunteering and leading student organizations while a UIC undergraduate and as an OT student. While an undergraduate, she served as president of the Mental Health and Disability Alliance at UIC. Asha helped establish the UIC student chapter of the Coalition of Occupational Therapy Advocates for Diversity, otherwise known as COTAD, and she's been serving as vice president. She has advanced the conversation on diversity by organizing panels and events, including connecting with other COTAD chapters in Chicago. So the UIC Occupational Therapy Emerging Leader Award for this year is presented to Asha Rao. Congratulations, Asha. We can't wait to see what you will do next. So even though I'm not able to present it in person, you will be receiving a certificate in the mail. So keep an eye out for that. And I wanted to extend my personal congratulations to all of our graduates and the awardees. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Joy Hamill. Next, I'd like to present our Post-Professional OTD Achievement Award. Before we do this, I would also like to recognize the many awards and honors our post-professional OTD students have received this past year, including many publications, presentations, scholarships, and fellowships. This year's OTD Achievement Award goes to Christina Rodriguez. Christina has a long history of volunteering and working towards the rights of marginalized communities and demonstrates a strong commitment to racial and social justice and to serving the needs of people with disabilities and the Latinx community. As a member of the Disability and Immigration Task Force of Illinois, she created and implemented a variety of Know Your Rights trainings for immigrants with disabilities. As part of her OTD project, Christina developed a curriculum guide for immigrant Latinx families to navigate the special education system in Illinois, and her committee evaluated her work as exceeding expectations. Congratulations, Dr. Rodriguez. I now have the privilege of presenting the Five-Year Teaching Service Awards. This year, we have six Five-Year Award recipients. The Five-Year Service Awards go to Bridget Hahn, Megan McCray, Libby Robinson, Jennifer Stinger, Christy Turner, 
and Esmeralda Vasquez. Our students, alumni, and faculty can attest to the fact that our adjunct faculty members are essential to our program. They teach our students in a variety of courses and on field work. They mentor our students and advise faculty on curriculum development. Their expertise helps us exceed accreditation standards. Their commitment to excellence and dedication to teaching our students while juggling the demands of clinical and academic work warrants our highest praise. Thank you to each of the 2021 Teaching Service Award recipients. You have been outstanding role models for our students and incredible sources of support and inspiration to our faculty. Hillary Marshall will now present the Excalibur Teaching Award. Dr. Heidi Fisher is an enthusiastic instructor who creates a welcoming learning environment with her humility and humor. While her courses are often technical, she teaches material in a memorable way using case studies, discussion, group work, and laughs. She is patient with her students when we don't understand and helps us think through the many aspects of the complex questions we face in occupational therapy. Her love of the field is clear in every lecture, and she truly wants each of her students to excel as future OTs. What our cohort has valued most about Dr. Fisher over the course of the program is her genuine concern for our well-being. She always advocated for us to take breaks and be kind to ourselves. She was always ready with a smile and a listening ear. She was quick to adapt schedules and curriculum to accommodate us, especially during the pandemic. The transition to virtual classes was hard on students and faculty alike especially those like Dr. Fisher, who were teaching from a house full of kids. But she remained her funny, understanding, honest self through the struggles. She acknowledged how difficult the situation was for everyone, while still managing to find joy and humor and new ways to impart knowledge to us through our computer screens. This brilliant and compassionate woman made us feel seen and heard, even when some of us were hundreds or even thousands of miles away. Dr. Fisher, we thank you for your dedication to the field of OT and commitment to the continued growth of your students. Thank you, Hillary, and congratulations to our Excalibur Award recipient. Each year, the department invites a person who is special to the class to present the keynote address. This person is decided upon by the graduating MS students. It is my pleasure to introduce our 2021 keynote speaker, Kelsey Waters. For our audience members who do not know Kelsey, let me tell you a little bit about her. Kelsey Waters is the clinical practice leader for occupational therapy at the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab. She specializes as a functional cognition and vision therapist. She's a frequent guest lecturer for the MS program and has provided lectures to the class of 2021 on topics related to neuroanatomy, brain injury, functional cognition, and visual impairments. She received the five-year teaching service award from the OT department last year and recently obtained her board certification in physical rehabilitation. She was awarded ILOTA's 2020 Occupational Therapist of the Year Award and NBCOT's 2020 Impact Award. Kelsey has growing research interests and started her clinical science doctorate work last year. She hails from the rainy Pacific Northwest and enjoys biking around town. Kelsey, we are so glad that you're with us today. It is my pleasure to now introduce Kelsey Waters. Imagine for a moment, I had been running for almost four hours. And at this point, though I knew I must be close to the finish, I wasn't quite sure if I could actually finish the Seattle Marathon. I reached the base of a small hill that would get me closer to my 26.2 mile goal. I stopped running, lowered my head, and took a deep breath. I was spent and I didn't think I could go another step. My coaches used to tell me that I should empty the t my tanks at the end of races, but my tanks were empty and it seemed too hard to keep going. But then I remembered, I was tough. I was resolved, I was committed, I was resilient. And so I persisted. I kept running even until the finish line and even sprinted across the finish line with my arms held high in celebration only to have the announcer remind me over the loudspeaker that I had not yet reached the fi actual finish line and that, Kelsey Waters, you need to keep going. So I ran another 200 feet and then I was done, finally. 
OT class of 2021, university faculty, family and friends, it is an honor to be part of this celebration as we welcome the newest group of occupational therapy practitioners into the field. You made it, you are done. You are a cohort of students who exemplify resilience and I applaud you. Your supporters and your supporters for the incredible accomplishments you have achieved in the last two years. Today, I welcome each graduate as a peer and a colleague. You have much to teach our profession and I cannot wait to see you in action. You have likely already figured this out, but you are entering a field in which flexibility, innovation, curiosity, and resilience are key tenets of our work. Being ready to complete an OT evaluation with a client with only five minutes to complete a chart review, that's flexibility. Creatively adapting a joystick of a power wheelchair to allow the user more independence, that's innovation. Spending an extra hour after work looking up an article on a new diagnosis or treatment intervention for a client, that's curiosity. Resilience is a bit harder. Resilience means moving forward when the task ahead is tough. Resilience means slowing down to preserve your mental health when things are not ideal. Resilience means changing directions even if, you're, even if it means your end goal may look different. Resilience is an inherent part of occupational therapy practice. Resilience means positively adapting and responding to stress or adversity. The dictionary defines resilience as having the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties and being tough. OTs have been publishing on resilience for years. Susan Fine published the Eleanor Clark Slagle Lecture in 1990, which may in fact be older than many of you, hashtag elder millennial. It was titled Resilience and the Human Adaptability, Who Rises Above Adversity? As she reflects on resilience, she cites words like buoyancy and hardiness and states, such buoyancy requires an active stance, persistence, the application of a variety of skills and strategies over a wide range of situations and problems, and flexibility, to know when to use what. In occupational therapy, we advocate for our clients to assume an active stance when standing to avoid falls, to persist with their home exercise programs and therapy sessions even when they are hard, apply the strategies they learn to remember appointments and become expert problem solvers. Whether they know it or not, our clients are learning to be resilient. An intervention I am very passionate about is strategy training. Through this approach, OTs collaborate with clients to support their active participation in learning how to do tasks. Instead of telling them what to do, OTs guide them along until they identify the strategies and techniques that will work for them. Along the way, clients may accept the changes they have experienced and be ready to adapt to future challenges they may encounter. In their yoga training for healthcare professionals, the Love Your Brain training team shared how they have shifted their language when talking with TBI survivors from recovery to resilience. They acknowledge that the recovery may not always be possible, but learning to face adversity with resilience is possible. Resilience is a skill that you can model, that you can encourage in, do you want me to start over? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Resilience is a skill that you can encourage in and model for your clients. And after the past 15 months that you have been through, you have had a lot of practice. Our clients can learn to be buoyant and resilient through occupational therapy. Let's jump back to the literature for just a moment. After reviewing a multitude of perspectives on resilience and adaptation, Susan Fine further writes about how to be resilient. Truly functional coping behavior has been characterized as not only lessening the immediate impact of stress, but also as maintaining a sense of self-worth and unity with the past and anticipated future. It involves two distinct tasks response to the requirements of the situation and a response to the feelings about the situation. Think of all the work that you have done to lessen the immediate impact of stress and uphold the sense of self-worth and unity in a time of what seemed like utter chaos. You have had more practice in this than many of your future colleagues. Whether you know it or not, you have already practiced the two tasks Susan Fine suggests. 
responding to the immediate requirements of the situation, and responding to your feelings about the situation. Don't believe me? Let's think back. After just six months into your master's degree training, you quickly transitioned from vir to a virtual learning environment as the world around you locked down. Enter your resilient response. You shifted gears many, many times. You adjusted and then readjusted. You laughed and likely cried a bit too. You responded to the immediate requirements of the situation. You created home offices. You downloaded Zoom and quickly learned the art of quickly unmuting and muting yourself with the space bar. You learned to communicate with each other via the chat window. You created post-it note diagrams of the nervous system on your bedroom wall. You learned how to do activity analysis while reflecting on just how many cabinet doors you left open during meal preps. And you practiced doing range of motion on your partners and pets. And then you did the next part, which is equally as important. You found ways to respond to your feelings about the situation and cope with the chaos. You got really good at baking bread and making candles. You learned to do virtual workouts and happy hours with your classmates. You came up with theme weeks to get use out of old clothes in your closet and creatively show up on your Zoom screens. You learned to physically distance but remain socially engaged. I'm not saying it was easy, but you have demonstrated your capacity to recover from difficulties and challenges that you face. And you are taking these skills, unexpected gems that you, of knowledge that you acquired during your graduate school training, free of charge, to your future workplaces. You will demonstrate to your colleagues what it looks like to respond and adapt positively in the face of adversity. As you embark on your career as an occupational therapist, I challenge each of you to continue to practice resilience. You will be a guide for those around you, your coworkers and clients. This does not mean that you must meet each challenge with a chipper smile on your face. Instead, resilience means having the strength to face adversity head on and respond to both in a way that reflects your values, goals, and revised capacity. Class of 2021, congratulations, you made it. Thank you, Kelsey, and thank you for the many contributions you have made to the OT program at UIC. In recognition of your important role in our ceremony today, the department will be providing you with a plaque. At this time, I'm pleased to introduce Alea Miller and Hilary Marshall, who are presenting the student response on behalf of the Class of 2021. Alea. It's so nice to be here with you today, especially since you're the very first person from the cohort that I met. Yes, at the UIC OT visit day in good old room 313. Feels like actual years ago. You know, way before these, nope, no. I'm not gonna say it. Don't say it. I promised myself I wouldn't say it. Good, don't. Unprecedented times, there. I said it. It had to be said. It's been a wild ride to say the least. And here we are at our virtual pinning ceremony. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Luckily, we had an amazing cohort to get us through it all. The coolest, smartest, kindest group of women and two men I've ever met. Agreed. For all of you out there watching, take a moment to pause the video and read the slides. I mean, give yourselves a round of applause. Just a little pre-recorded lecture humor for you. But in all seriousness, we all deserve recognition for making it to this point. And it's no coincidence that we did make it, because this group of people is a special group of people. Just one example of how special? Think back to December, right before we all embarked on our first fieldwork. Debbie asked us to share kind words about each other and then made individualized appreciation creations for everyone in the cohort. Debbie was kind enough to share highlights with us as we prepared for today's event. Here's what stood out. We are a cohort that has tremendous admiration and love for each other. Honestly, the amount of gushing we do would be gross if it wasn't so nice. We showed up for each other in person and virtually by creating a safe, supportive environment. We shared resources, bounced ideas around, studied together, enjoyed a few pre-COVID outings and played on teams. Slash stars, two-time champs. And lightened the mood for each other when we needed it. We tried to make sure that no one felt judged and everyone felt heard, even when we disagreed. We are a group with a broad range of life experiences, which means we learned so much from each other. 
we had access to a wealth of unparalleled knowledge. Our exchanges in and outside of the classroom built on the curriculum by drawing on all of our unique perspectives. And we're fun too. Definitely. We've had some memorable times together, in person and virtually. We asked you to share a few unique memories about our UAC experience, and this is what you said. That feeling when you get a Zoom breakout room full of folks you love. Virtual spirit days. The Ramona video and dozens of subsequent memes. Monday nights with Matcha and the Machers. <laughs> Boot camp, face shield edition. The elation of a good shared study guide. The charms of room 313. Gail's beloved greetings on our pre-recorded lectures and our cat's guest appearances on live Zooms. Zooming into classes from all across the country. Intramural sports teams, again, two-time champs the team building experience that was Liz's hand lecture. Special shout out to Artemis. Friendsgiving and that turkey that nobody got to eat. The youngest member of our cohort, Teresa's baby. Two words, technical difficulties. Jenica ringing her break time bell. The Friday afternoon trek to West Campus for the Cadaver Lab crew. Conference experiences like the wonderful ILOTA student conclave at Shirley Ryan Ability Lab. Our cohort's collective tendency for chit-chat, which may have gotten us into trouble on more than one occasion. And, of course, all things moho. Somehow, we managed to find joy and camaraderie during a challenging graduate program at a very difficult period in time. COVID forced us to all be adaptable, and this country's racial reckoning called upon us to come to terms with explosive racial injustices in America. Over the past 18 months, Many in our cohort have gone above and beyond to answer that call in new ways. By establishing a UIC chapter of COTAD, meeting in support of Black Lives Matter, and entering into a dialogue with the department through a town hall for faculty and classmates to share student experiences of racism. I said it once, and I'll say it again. These are unprecedented times. But amidst the challenges is an opportunity to expand the way we practice as OTs and relate to our clients and colleagues. This cohort has made it clear that we are ready and willing to take that opportunity and our profession will be all the better for it. Class of 2021, you are intelligent, unique, and passionate thinkers who will have a positive impact in the field of OT. As we go into the world in a broad range of settings, we all have the power to be change makers. We enter the field of occupational therapy with purpose, armed with our clinical reasoning, technical knowledge, and intentional client-centeredness. Our OT brains will never stop growing. The UIC OT department and its dedicated professors have ensured that. And no matter where we each end up after graduation, we know that everyone in this exceptional group of people will be successful. Cheers to the class of 2021. We did it! Thank you for your heartfelt student response, Alea and Hillary. As we transition to the main event of the day, let me tell you about our pinning ceremony. The UIC Department of Occupational Therapy was created in 1943. The first department head, Beatrice Wade, began the proud tradition of a pinning ceremony. Pinning ceremonies celebrated transition, that of student to professional. Students receiving their pins today have completed their master's degree and are preparing for the final steps of entry into the profession of occupational therapy. The term profession has special significance. It's different from having a job or even having a career. Members of professions share several key responsibilities. Among others, these responsibilities include developing and evaluating their own science or body of knowledge, providing oversight to one's own practice and that of their peers to assure that the conduct of members of the profession meets the highest ethical standards. Meeting the expectations of a profession requires critical thinking, integrity, commitment, and perseverance. You have already demonstrated the capability to do this. Although no one could have imagined the impact the pandemic would have had on your education, as Kelsey said, you have demonstrated buoyancy and hardiness as you grew as individuals in ways that could not have occurred otherwise. Your ability to excel in fieldwork at a time when you were unmoored and facing such uncertainty speaks to your capability to manage future challenges that life will bring your way. 
Today, we welcome you as colleagues to our profession. It is my pleasure to present the 2021 graduates of UIC's Master of Science in Occupational Therapy program. <laughs> Congratulations to the class of 2021. It is my honor to introduce Alea Miller, who will now recite the Occupational Therapist's Creed. Respectfully and enthusiastically, I do hereby promise my wholehearted service to care for those entrusted to me. I ensure competence in my work, and I will strive for greater knowledge, skill, and understanding in the discharge of my duties in whatever role I embrace practitioner, educator, researcher, or manager. I solemnly declare that I will hold and keep sacred whatever I may learn of the lives of those I enter. In embracing the responsibilities and challenges of working with persons of diverse backgrounds, I will uphold a person's right to self-determination and I will always endeavor to provide quality care. I pledge from this day forth to forever serve ethically and compassionately, and I hope for patience, gentleness, and understanding in all therapeutic partnerships. I'm excited to announce the graduates of our post-professional OTD program. These are students that have completed additional doctoral work in advanced areas of OT practice, education, and scholarship. I'm incredibly proud of our post-professional OTD graduates who completed their studies and OTD projects during a very difficult time with COVID. You've been resilient in coping with unforeseen circumstances, have supported each other throughout the process, and have created and defended excellent projects that exemplify our UIC community-engaged scholarship of practice. I'm excited to follow you and your contributions to the OT field and profession as you take on leadership roles. Congratulations to all of you on a job well done. It is my pleasure to present the 2021 graduates of UIC's Post-Professional Occupational Therapy Doctorate Program. Our ceremony will conclude in just a moment, and the department would like to invite you to join us for a virtual reception via Zoom. A final thank you to all of you for supporting our graduates and the university. A special thank you to Maria Larson and Winnie Lucas of UIC Creative and Digital Services for producing this virtual graduation celebration. And to the class of 2021, please know that although our celebration is virtual, our pride in you could not be more real. Congratulations.